Welcome everybody to the new fly fisher. I'm your host Colin McEwen. Today I'm here with Will Ryan, author of Smallmouth Strategies on a Fly Rod. Will and I are going to be fishing for smallmouth here in a river just outside of Ottawa, Ontario. We'll be talking about the tactics and strategies he's got detailed in his book that will help you catch more smallmouth on a fly rod. It's going to be a great day. Come along with us. The new fly fisher is made possible thanks to grants from the Canadian Fly Fisher Magazine, containing information about fly fishing techniques, equipment, rigging options, Canadian fly patterns, and recipes. The Canadian Fly Fisher Magazine. Frog hair high performance tippet material by Gamma Technologies. Richard Wheatley of England. Makers of quality aluminum fly boxes since 1890. Teton, fly reels beautifully simple. Loon, environmental outdoor products, fishing with a conscience. Fisherman's Health, the place to relieve the pains and discomforts of fly fishing. Daiichi Premium Fly Hooks, the choice of serious anglers the world over. And with the financial support of viewers like you. In today's show, I'm joining noted author Will Ryan on a small river outside of my hometown. It is a beautiful summer day, and we just got on the river for the last few hours of light to angle for smallmouth bass. Will Ryan is a professor who teaches writing at a college in Massachusetts. An experienced fly fisher, he is also a passionate smallmouth bass angler. Will's book is a wonderful addition to anyone's resource library because of the incredible detail he goes into on all subjects. From what the typical diet of a smallmouth bass is in the spring, to why certain patterns are effective, his book is well researched and thorough. One area of the book really caught my attention because it applies to other species. Will's information and research on crayfish and their importance in ecosystems is excellent. Many fly fishers do not realize that crayfish are an important forage for many trout, such as browns, and other species. This is particularly true at certain times of the year. We'll explain more about crayfish in great detail. Will, we've been collecting a few of the uh, crayfish and other insects that are uh, here in the Mississippi River. Can you tell us a little bit about how important this is, because you certainly keyed in on this in your book. Right. Crayfish, for adult smallmouths, crayfish are arguably the single most important forage. Mm -hmm. Um, and particularly for the fly fisherman, the fly fisher person, they're, they're, uh, they're really, really important. And there's a number of things that anglers can do to, to increase the likelihood of success with crayfish imitations. And one of the things that we saw with these crayfish, the first thing I would point to is, is their size. Mm -hmm. And we can see that these crayfish are only about, would you say, an inch and a half, an inch to an inch and yeah, a half? Yeah, at most, yeah. At most. Um, and that's important. Most studies show that, that smallmouths prefer crayfish in that inch to inch and a half range. Mm -hmm. The thing that makes it difficult for them to take those smaller crayfish sometimes is, as we found stumbling around the rocks, the smaller crayfish can be trickier to catch. Yeah. Um, but when they can catch them, they prefer crayfish this size. Uh, the other thing to note is, that th is the length of, of the chele or the, or the claws on these crayfish. They're actually quite short, mm -hmm. and 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 you can we can see. Do we want to look at this crayfish here in this sure. bucket? This guy has, this guy has pretty short claws. As we can, as we can see, his claws barely extend past his nose. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that most many crayfish patterns have is they have claws like a good sized lobster. Mm -hmm. And in fact, for years, fly fishers have used big claws to identify fly patterns as crayfish patterns. In fact, smallmouths 
may look at big claws and be pushed away by them. And, and because that signifies a crayfish that's an older, bigger crayfish, and probably a crayfish that isn't molting. So often, one of the things I do with my, the, my patterns, and many of the more successful patterns, is, is they have very short claws. As you can see, my claws are very short as a way, as a way to signify to the bass, and we might not think that looks as much like a crayfish as one of those big clawed lobster patterns, but to the bass, that looks like a crayfish he, he can eat. So it's an issue of silhouette. Silhouette, silhouette, uh, as well as size. And you can see this is just about the same size, these patterns. These, these are just about an inch long. In your book, that was one of the things I really picked up uh -huh. on, was you keyed in on size and how a lot of the bigger patterns are really, I mean, just like the yeah. claws, they're inappropriate. You think bigger crayfish, bigger, bigger fish, fish, but the reality is they're all looking for the easy meal, aren't they? Absolutely, okay. uh, absolutely. The thing about, the, about these small crayfish is and most of our northern and northeastern and north and north central United States and southern Canadian waters, um, crayfish this size, this is about August, mid-August size for crayfish. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're, we're August 8th, 19th, I believe it is, whatever the date is today. But we're right, these are right on target, cold summer or not. And so cr smallmouth will often switch from bait fish in June and July to crayfish in August because finally these crayfish have gotten to be a big enough size where it's worth a smallmouth's while to go after them. And that's why you'll see even bait fishermen in your favorite lake or river, you can put him back in the water there, favorite lake or river will often say minnows in July, crayfish in August. And that's because smallmouth are really used to looking at the crayfish in August um, when they're, they're just, they're big enough size so it makes sense for them to go after them for a meal. Mm -hmm. And these young crayfish are particularly desirable for bass because, because they're much more likely to be soft-shelled or molting than are the larger crayfish. We're, what I'm doing here is, um, with a crayfish pattern, one of the things, oh, just missed them. One of the things that's important is, particularly when I'm right near the drop-off here, is to, is to not give up on the retrieve too quickly. I know that sounds like a cliche in angling, that you want to fish out your retrieves. But in particular, with, with these bass, because they're probably right on the edge of the drop-off, and, and so a lot of times, the first part of your cast is you're over no fish, and the fish are hanging right on the edge of the drop-off. So it's important to keep it slow and not, and not speed up the pace as you get close to you. So we're just really inching it along. And, and one of the things that's real, that, as, as I, we noted earlier, it's important to try to keep your retrieves really inch. You can see my fingers. I'm just barely inching it like this. And I'll watch my rod tip. And a lot of times, you won't be any bite. You'll just notice a little pressure, a little tick. That was just a rock. And when you have your hook turned up, you can hop. There was a fish, and I missed him. He was right at the edge of that drop off there. A lot of times, if you, if you feel pressure with a crayfish and, and your hook's turned up, you can just move it ahead a little bit and see if you feel a strike. If it's just a snag, sometimes if you give the rod some slack, you can hop it right over the rock. Let's see if I can get hung up right here, maybe catch a fish even. Crayfish, also called crawfish or crawdads, are closely related to the lobster. More than half of the more than 500 species occur in North America, particularly in Kentucky and Louisiana in the Mississippi Basin. Crayfish also live in Europe, New Zealand, East Asia, and throughout the world. Crayfish, common in streams and lakes, often conceal themselves under rocks or logs. They are most active at night when they feed largely on snails, algae, insect larvae, worms, tadpoles, and some aquatic vegetation. Also dead fish, worms, corn, small eggs are also favorites of the crayfish. Studies show that adults become most active at dusk and continue heavy feeding activity until daybreak. Young crayfish are more likely to be the ones out during bright sunny days while the older crayfish are more active on cloudy days and during the night. This is one of the reasons why young crayfish are such easy targets for fish. 
General movement is always a slow walk, but if startled, crayfish use rapid flips of their tail to swim backwards and escape danger. The last thing that uh, I thought was really key when we we're talking about crayfish in your book, um, and I think it's really important for the viewers to understand, it's something that a typical mistake, as I understand it, when fishing with crayfish patterns, is the importance of going slow. Getting Absolutely. it down on the bottom, one, and two, slow retrieves. Can you talk a little bit about how to do that? Sure. Because uh, I know typically I tend to bring them in fairly quick, and that's really wrong. Yeah, yeah. I think one of the, one of the points about crayfish that was really really instrument useful for me as an angler was when I fished with a, a fly fisherman up in Vermont, a fellow, I just met him in the river, and he, I forgot, he, I didn't know his name, but what he showed me was, he said, you're retrieving too quickly. He said, put your fly right in the bottom of that pool. Now, how fast do you want that fly to go? Now, you make your motions on your line to see how fast you want that fly to go. And you'd be amazed how slowly you need to retrieve to make your crayfish inch. Yeah. When we think of, we think of this, it will make the crayfish inch, and that crayfish is just bouncing around like a, like a scared rabbit. And with, with smallmouths, and this is not just true with crayfish, it's true with almost all baitfish, smallmouths have their best luck when, when they can catch a prey that is unaware it's being stalked. So smallmouths really like to, know, like to find crayfish or like to size up crayfish that don't know they're being sized up yet. So the more you can move your crayfish really slowly, in fact, I can't tell you how many crayfish, and I'm sure other fishermen would say the same thing, we've caught with just our fly line, just fly just sitting on the bottom. Because in part, you really want a very, very, very slow retrieve. Now, Will, we yeah. just spoke a little bit about size in terms of uh, how important it is uh, to match the hatch, as it were, with crayfish. Could you talk a little bit about color? Okay, sure. Uh, crayfish will often take on the color of, of their substrate of, for good reason, because they need, they need to be camouflaged from, from predation. Um, but all, no matter where you go, all, nearly all crayfish become lighter as, as they molt their shell. Just as our clothes fade, their, shell, their shells fade and, and, and become lighter. And one thing that I like to do, and most crayfish, the, the great crayfish designs, whether it's a Clouser crayfish, Bill Smith crayfish, they are, they're often in lighter shades as a way to signify again to the smallmouth that this is a bass this is a crayfish worth eating. And you can see this, this, this fellow here has a pretty much of a hard shell, and he's pretty dark in coloration, isn't he, mm -hmm. Colin? Yeah. So in general, one of the things you can do as an, angler, as an angler is you can look at the crayfish in your waters, see what color they are, and, and, and tie a, a fairly light imitation of that crayfish. Because remember, your colors and your fly patterns are going to darken up as they're in the water. What I like to do with my crayfish is I have different color deer hair, bucktail, oh, that I use as the carapace, which is the shell over the crayfish. And these, this is actually brown bucktail, but I have a Pantone marker in olive. Mm -hmm. So I give it just a little bit of an olive hue to it over, with brown bucktail. And in the water, that, that gets a nice light, you can't see it from there, of course, but it gets a nice light coloration. Mm -hmm. Now that's important in terms of the, their molting, right? Because that's what it signifies to the smallmouth, easy meal, right? That's like a green light to them. Yes, sir. Okay. And the other thing I just want to say about the, can we go back to size for a moment, is um, the thing, a lot of things work in late summer that make crayfish the pattern to use in August. And it's, part of it is they're younger crayfish and they're, and they're molting and they're going through their shells. But also remember that their metabolism is higher because the water's warmer and that speeds up their body metabolism. That's why from early August to mid-September, crayfish bass will go for crayfish like you wouldn't believe. By late September, they're back on baitfish, and that's because the young of the year baitfish now, they've gotten big enough, so they're the easy meal. The crayfish have, begun, have stopped molting, and they're no longer so desirable, no, more, no longer abundant and available as the young of the year baitfish are, which is why you'll often see bait smallmouths really gathered and organized around shallow weed beds in September. And that's because that's where the young of the year bait fish are Oops. at that time. Okay. Might be better if we both go off the center and we both just cast both cool. sides. Sounds good. Does that sound like a better idea? 10-4. Yeah, this must be nice at low water. 
See, it's I can, just, I can as see my why. wife said, it's unbelievable because I come home every night just glowing from having yeah. a great night of bass fishing. Tapley. Oh, <laughs> that's the price you pay for barbless. First jump. That, was a, that wasn't too bad. It wasn't a huge fish, but like these, uh, most of these river smallmouths, they're very strong, eh? Most crayfish live short lives, usually less than two years. Therefore, rapid, high volume reproduction is important for the continuation of the species. Many crayfish become sexually mature in their first year and mate in October or November. Egg laying usually occurs the following spring. Oh, look at the size of that bass. Woohoo! Nice one. What a beauty. Look at the size of this nice thing. Nice one? Oh, this is a good one. Great. This is at least three pounds. Beautiful. It's a largemouth. Is that right? Yep. How's that? Beautiful fish. <laughs> well, let's let him go. Thank you, sir. Oh, one last flash, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Outstanding. As the sun drew further down towards the tree line, the fishing really began to pick up. It's a great spot. Oh. It's typical of the great spots that are around a lot of big cities. Oh, I know. Yeah, no kidding. What a strong fish, huh? Yeah, they are, aren't they? It's very strong. It's nice to get fish this big in, in the river. I mean, usually, I mean, that's an unusual aspect here, where you can wade the fish to the side. One of the things with, with, with this sort of downstream presentation is smallmouth, as Colin was suggesting earlier, really like current breaks. Now, there isn't much for current in down through here, but they'll often be just on the edges of currents so or efficient transition, as Colin was suggesting. Wow, it's a fall fish. Oh, oh!
It quickly became evident that Will and I were witness to a relatively large hatch of Hexagenia mayflies, which really made the fish active. It seemed every cast produced fish of various sizes and varieties. Soon it became too dark to safely wade and fish, so we called it a night. First thing in the morning, Will and I returned to the same spot. It was cool and not much was moving except for the odd groundhog on the shoreline. I pointed out some of the better holes and seams to Will, and then we began working these spots over thoroughly with crayfish patterns. The fishing has really slowed down. They're very passive, and Will and I have gone to using crayfish and nymph patterns, fishing them very slowly near the bottom, and the fish seem to be tucked into this faster water here, and uh, the takes are very, very subtle. Will is a very proficient nymph fisherman, and as I watched him, he clearly demonstrated the importance of observation when nymph fishing. When you are bouncing a weighted crayfish pattern through pockets and seams, the approach is similar to nymph fishing. High sticking will help you lift your fly line off the water and thus help reduce drag on your fly. This is critical to your presentation, as is carefully watching your line for any movement or twitch, sudden stop, or just something out of the ordinary which should transmit to you that there's a strike on your fly. Using crayfish patterns is effective for both smallmouth and largemouth bass but it is equally effective for species like trout or even northern pike. If you have crayfish in the water systems you fish, then it is likely the species you favor also eat crayfish as a part of their diet. The importance of crayfish in a game fish's diet can be played up or down depending upon one's point of view. On the downside, studies show that trout eat more aquatic insects than any other item. On the upside, biological studies also show that stream-living trout will select the largest prey items they can swallow. When crayfish are available, they will be eaten. Oh, a little guy. <laughs> I was just about to change, too. Oh! Even the little guys are getting away on me today. As Will demonstrates in this short clip, make sure you follow the fly all the way through the swing as often a following fish will take your offering as you lift your line. Despite our best efforts, the fishing was not near as good as it was the previous evening. It would seem the hex hatch had filled the bellies of most of the smallmouth bass. With the sun now rising above the tree line, Will and I decided to go for breakfast and further discuss tactics for smallmouth bass. We hope you enjoyed today's show, and if you get a chance, check out Will Ryan's book, it is an excellent resource for anyone wanting to learn more about smallmouth bass fishing with a fly rod. If you want to learn more about our series or about the patterns we use today, then join us on the World Wide Web at www.thenewflyfisher.com. Take care and thanks for watching. The New Fly Fisher is made possible thanks to grants from Daiichi Premium Fly Hooks, the choice of serious anglers the world over. Fisherman's Health, the place to relieve the pains and discomforts of fly fishing. Loon, environmental outdoor products, fishing with a conscience. Teton, fly reels, beautifully simple. Richard Wheatley of England, makers of quality aluminum fly boxes since 1890. Frog hair, high performance tippet material by Gamma Technologies. The Canadian Fly Fisher Magazine, containing information about fly fishing techniques, equipment, rigging options, Canadian fly patterns, and recipes. The Canadian Fly Fisher Magazine. And with the financial support of viewers like you. To order a copy of your favorite new fly fisher episode, contact us through our website 
at www.thenewflyfisher.com or call us at 613-836-8295. Copies of this educational series make an excellent gift for your favorite angler or friend, and they also make a good addition to your reference library. $14.95 for one VHS tape, plus shipping and handling. Order three tapes and only pay $39.95, plus shipping and handling. <laughs>